Yo, what's going on guys? Today we'll be looking at Summer Europa. One thing I will mention, I've seen a lot of players in this game, many of which I do not recommend sparking on this banner, wasting their spark fun on this banner due to the immense bait that is Summer Europa and Yukata Jessica. I do not believe this banner is that great to be rolling on. Um, I really don't recommend doing it at all. Obviously, I have the units, meaning that they was rolling on the banner. I don't recommend most players do it at all. It should be a very small few of players that really should be going on this banner. Now, that's my opinion. You may not agree with it. What I considered doing in the future was doing like a banner review and doing like a should you spark on this banner, mainly for like fest and flash gal as the other banners don't really matter nobody cares about the plus one gotcha or the fan favorite ones so they're not that important now do tell me how you guys feel about it i would obviously rate them on a scale like i guess maybe one to ten a to b i don't know i'll figure it out with the rating scale leave it in the comments how you guys feel about that and i may consider doing it for future banners obviously because you can't do it for previous banners as they always get updated uh, now, with Europa, she is another copy of a unit in the same element, meaning that she cannot be partied along the original Europa. Keep that in mind. Now, I've gotten this question quite a bit. Which Europa is a better unit? You cannot compare two units with completely different skill sets. Even if their names are similar, they have different roles. The Summer Europa is more of an offensive unit as he specializes in capping the fence down, which is very strong, bonus damage, and buffing up your... Oh, okay, I guess they both buff, but... She's mainly about bonus damage, crit, and hitting damage. You want to hit hard. While the other Europa is more of a support unit as he heals, as he clears. They both buff, but... um. The other Europa gives like healing and the uh, ele element switch. So it's a different role. They're not the same unit. If you're looking for offense, the summer one is your offense unit. If you're looking for support and like harder content, the original Europa is what you want to run. Keep in mind that you can just swap the outfits on the original Europa. So she's in a bikini. <laughs> yes, we all are very happy to see her. Oh, she's so pretty. She's so pretty. Oh my god. This is like Dark Angel Olivia levels of what the fuck. Um, you probably see the pool I'm going to be running. Yes, I'll be doing a Kango build today. So if you're wondering, I've already did a video on the staff build. So a little heads up for that. I'll remove it for now though. Now, her Ogi. Her Ogi is a deal triple attacks while in effect. Now, this is very good. She gets one turn of guaranteed TA. Very strong skill. Um, she also gains a bonus damage based on a number of starry waters. So very, very, very good skill. Her Ogi rather. Um, it's not air levels are like unfair with she gains 50% bonus damage, but still very good for what she does and complements her passive really well. Her skill one is pretty much only defense down, so you think you're really worried about. It does gain more hits based on the number of starry waters, but overall, it's not that insane a damage. It's not really a damage skill. What you're using it for is the ability to hit 25 defense, a uh, 25 water defense down. Very strong skill. It does allow you to cap 50% with mist, and that's pretty much one of her main utilities for the team. Uh, not many units have 25% water defense down. So her having that is a very, very strong skill. Now we're looking at her skill two, Starry Fate. Now this skill is the skill that people felt was like really overpowered for Europa. Um, personally, this skill is in a very weird situation. Now you may notice that it has an additional effect. When you have Starry Waters at five, you get CA reactivation. Meaning the dual art skill that you guys may know from, from uh, what's it called? <laughs> Crysword. It's the same skill where you get uh, another Ogi. 
does not cost more charge bar though, so keep that in mind and you can get another Ogi. But you have to be at five. The reason that's weird is because she starts with two, right? And the way it works is that you can either use a turn one, but if you use a turn one, you have to wait nine turns to get the CA activation again. Or you can wait at, at turn one, right? You can wait a little turns until she hits five, but it can put her in the weird situations depending on situations. Like she could be in a weird situation depending on like bosses and her team comp. So it's like, it's a weird skill. It's not the easiest skill to manage to instantly get five stacks. It's really, really annoying. So to keep that in mind, it's not the easiest thing to get five stacks instantly. So I just wanna throw it out there if anybody's wondering. Now her skill three. Now this skill also makes it a little bit harder for her to gain five starry waters as this is the only skill she has that consumes waters. Ability of consuming two waters. Now what she gives with this skill is 20% bonus damage and 50% crit rate with 50% damage boost to the party. This only activates upon eating up two waters. So if you don't have two waters, it's only gonna be a single ally. I do not recommend touching a skill if you don't have two waters. If you don't have two, don't hit it. It's not worth hitting. You should only be hitting the skill when you have five, uh, at least two. There's really not many situations where you have less than two, but I wanna throw that out there so that you know that. Like you really wanna only use this skill when you have two. It's pretty much not even worth hitting if it don't, you don't have two. Now her support skills. She gains one starry waters upon using damage skills or dealing triple attacks. Unfortunately, she does not gain one off of Ogi. And that's a really big thing because if you run her in an Ogi comp, like I'll be running in the future, that means that she, if she Ogi's a lot, meaning she won't be getting starry water, meaning that you can't use her skill too. It's a really weird situation to be in and this only pertains to the Kango build, so. I'll be showing it off, but I wanted to throw that out there that, you know, she won't be gaining a lot because she keeps Ogieing and she doesn't gain anything off of Ogi. Uh, hopefully in the future they do buff her and give her that ability to gain off of Ogi, as the fact that she doesn't gain off of Ogi really hurts her a ton. Um, boost to attack based on the number of starry waters, and keep in mind she only starts with two. I believe somebody mentioned on my stream that she started with three in the trial. Therefore, it was kind of nerfed, unfortunately. Feels bad, man. Her second support skill is really not something you'll be seeing too often. This is probably for low level players out there. Um, she has the ability to give a heal upon anyone being revived by a skill or summon. So she will give a 3000 heal and a one debuff clear. So it's okay. It's just not something that's very practical. If you're anywhere in mid game, it's not that common. Early game though, it'd probably be common because you have lower health and you'd be more likely to die. So just keep that in mind. Now her EMPs are very good. You want to go with debuff success rate, skill damage, stamina, and water attack up. Triple attack is also highly advised. And after that, you can just go into either sea damage, attack, and that's about it really. Um, defense is not really needed on her. You're not really using her for defense. You're using her for more damage output, so it's not really gonna benefit her much. And double attack, nah, nah. She needs a triple attack for the starry sky anyway, so she doesn't really gain anything out of double attacking. Keep that in mind, you need her to triple attack, so. Uh, other than that, we're gonna be testing her out on a Kango build this time, and we'll see how she performs with Kango, and uh, let's get to it right now. Okay, we're here. You may notice that the pool is a little bit different. I actually did not have the Primark in the pool my first run of this. I'm doing Colossus today, so it's letting people know. But yeah, I did not have the Primark and I didn't even realize that the damage was so high that I forgot the Primark. Now, one thing I will mention is that I no longer have stamina on my Opus. Because of that, I do, I do lose a little bit of damage, unfortunately. So it's kind of unfortunate, but I do lose a tad bit of damage on that. that. 
Now, one good thing about bringing Europa is that you do gain the ability now to bring Pandemonium. Instead of bringing the fence down, since Europa comes with the fence down, you can just bring, you can just now end up bringing a, uh, bringing a Pandemonium. So it's really cool. I like it. That's always been a problem with the Kango team is that you have to bring the fence down when it comes to solo, but generally you don't really want to bring the fence down, so. Now that you don't need to bring it, it's really nice. Hmm. Yeah, you can, you can see the damage drop there. It's because I don't have... I do not have a... a what's it called? I forgot what I was talking about. Yeah, I do not have stamina anymore on my pool, so... I actually was not capping on my main character when it comes to those OGs. Those actually very lackluster. Should be doing 5 million plus. But due to no stamina on the pool, it does hurt quite a bit. I don't know if I'm going to swamp back the stamina though, because you know the new water meta is is staff, and I don't really use this this setup anymore. Unfortunately, I don't I don't really use uh, the good old Kangol comp anymore. Other than yeah, I don't really don't use it at all. I don't use it for Ultimate Bahamut anymore, so. Kango just doesn't have much value to me right now, unfortunately. I know some people still like this build quite a bit, but I just don't have a purpose for it right now. Okay, cool. Hmm. Yeah, it took me, I think the first time I did this, it took me a couple of turns. But you can see here, right, right now Europa's at 4, so it's kind of hard for her to gain the ability to get five instantly. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna Ogi again this turn, right? And that's cool and all, but she won't gain a stack, unfortunately. So she's gonna end up in a really weird situation where she can't do anything still until she auto attacks. So I think right now we're on turn, what, four, I believe? So it's, it's, it's really weird with this unit. I, I believe we're on turn four, I could be wrong though. But she does have the guaranteed TA right now, so it's going to give her enough so that she can gain it. She would not gain it though if I was to hit um if I was to hit her her uh if I was to hit Summer Mackie, she would not gain it. I think she would Ogi. I could be wrong though. Okay. I forgot what's the boss do again? Laser beam? This is blind, right? Oh! It sealed me. Oh, isn't that up? You. Mm. I'm tilted. How long is that? That's actually, that's actually like, extremely annoying. Like, extremely annoying. And we missed the fence down or something? What? Oh, no, we didn't. All right. Oh, I'm kind of tilted. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I'm actually kind of tilted. <laughs> a tad bit. We have to do quite a bit of damage though. This time. So that's one Ogi. So you see the, C the reactivate there. That's two Ogis. Let me see get another one, I think. Yep, okay. Three Ogis. So with reactivate, we did get three Ogis out of that. Which is, which was okay. Not bad, not bad. I wish the rest of my team could Ogi, but you know. We're looking at a bunch of units right now who can't Ogi, unfortunately. And oh, those, those Ogi could have been stronger, huh? Because we didn't have a greatest scale one up. This is annoying! <laughs> so you can see right here, like, being Europa not having that support can screw you over sometimes, unfortunately. I thought we just screwed over right there. Even though we do a lot more damage now, um... Maybe it would have been better if I had used Summer Mackie. I would have never got hit with that debuff, actually. But what is done is done. What can you do about it? Learn from your mistakes. I tend to forget what Colossus does because I don't fight this boss too often. It's not a rarely common cause of me fighting this. Uh, we need to use Pandemonium here. Do we have the Kango? No, we don't have the Kango skill on. I think we took damage, huh? I was gonna use the Kango skill, but I don't think we don't have it right now, so. 
but I believe the boss should be dead, I think. Right? Maybe I should have used it. I should have just believed in the little multi-attack I did have. I was kind of scared that I was not going to multi-attack enough. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to risk it. But, uh, it's dead. Would have died faster if, you know, someone didn't hit me with a, a debuff. Re <laughs> Unfortunately. But yeah, it's like, one of the problems with Europa is that, it's like on the Kango build that's the Ogi so much, right? You, you want to keep Ogiing that you can't even use the skill too properly until a couple turns in. Because he doesn't gain anything off of Ogiing. Now, this could be simply fixed really quickly, right? All you gotta do is give her ability to gain off of Ogi, and that's about it. That'll make it a lot better. But I just don't think on the Kangle build, she's that great compared to other options like Folia. Now, that's my opinion. She's great if you need to cap the fence down, but still know that your skill 2 is gonna be a little bit lackluster because you can't really bring out her full potential because she just can't auto attack. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And thank you guys for watching. And do don't forget to respond to my uh, my my uh, my thoughts when it comes to upcoming banners and doing a video if they are spark worthy. Thank you guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.